So first, uh, I am uh, working for come to camp We have an open source IT service company which uh, is based in Switzerland, France, and Germany. Uh, we have uh, committers and contributors uh, in several open source projects like uh, GeoServer, GeoServer Cloud, GeoQuestra, GeoMapFish, and so on. And today, I would like to talk about uh, some uh, uh, Terraform provider I, uh, we maintain for a couple of years now uh, and uh, do some update on what we have done during the past, la the past year. So, for uh, who, uh, so Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool that lets you build, change, and version include and on-premise resources safely and efficiently. It was developed by Archicorp until last year. It was under Mozilla Public License and Beve have moved to BSL uh, last year. Uh, why develop a Terraform provider? Um, uh, if so it's for only for the configuration of the of GeoServer, not deploying GeoServer by itself. Uh, we use it because uh, compared to uh, other uh, solution, there is uh, already a management of references between the resources of uh, between the different resources of a uh, GeoServer configuration. Uh, you have also dip, um, uh, by default uh, management of dependencies between uh, resources. Uh, if, uh, when you update your configuration, you will only modify the, uh, the uh, resource which are uh, required and not the other. There is uh, templating variables and secret injections. And uh, you have also the possibility to organize your configuration into modules. Uh, it's also uh, something which is uh, very uh, that uh, in some companies that with a big uh, IT department that they are used to Terraform, so they can uh, they, they are confident uh, if uh, we come with uh, this kind of solution. <coughs> Uh, so we the the code base is divided in two uh, two components, a Go library which wraps the GeoServer REST API, <coughs> and which could be used in another project uh, in Go, and the provider itself which uh, uses SDK of Terraform, and the client library to to bring the the features. Uh, we use it uh, mainly for the Nexus system, which uh, uh, we build for the French, uh, French firefighters. Uh, we have a GeoServer configuration with uh, 15 different data store, uh, 100 layers sty uh, layer styles, some layer groups for uh, providing base maps. Uh, we also use a GeoWeb cache for the layer groups and for uh, caching external WMS uh, services. We do continuous deployment for all the merge requests of all the developers. So there we have in uh, development 40, uh, generally 40 environments in parallel to deploy each time we do a new feature. Uh, we also have uh, a dozen or so UAT environments. And we also have the production now which, uh, which is used and all they uh, use uh, uh, for the GeoServer uh, component, they, we use the Terraform provider to deploy uh, easily the, the configuration. Uh, here you we can have a sample of the module and how the, all the resources of Terraform are glued together to, to know how, uh, in which order to create and update the, the information. So for uh, OSM uh, module that uh, they are, uh, you have uh, so, uh, we start with the workspace, which as a base tool, we have a GNDA data store which reference the workspace and will be created after. We use also the pre-generalized data store and so we have uh, before um, XML resource, which is put uh, with the REST API. Uh, the, the layer reference the two data stores and so they will be created after. We have the styles also. <coughs> All are, to, are glued in a layer group and the layer group uh, is referenced in a uh, GeoWeb cache instance uh, together with the blob store and a uh, grid set that we push. So all these are uh, all our um, uh, Terraform resources. So what have we done during uh, last year? Uh, the current version in the 
2020. Uh, we have new resources uh, to manage uh, cascade, uh, cascading WMS server. Uh, so we have a Geo Server WMS Store, Geo Server WMS Layer. We also had uh, the resource to manage a five blob store uh, in a Geo Web Cache. Uh, we also changed the Geo Server feature type uh, to uh, support automatic definition of attributes based on the real uh, storage. I will come back later on that. And we also use some new use case. We validated to use uh, the Geo Server feature type resource with a SQL view. Uh, so it works. So, so currently we have not all the Geo Server uh, resources, but some. So we have a uh, resource for deploying specific files in the data deer. Uh, we have the workspace a data store where uh, we have tested with uh, GDBC, GNDI, with uh, gener gen pre generalized features stored in Progress and the, with SQL view. We manage feature types, styles, and layer group. WMS store and WMS layer. And on Geo Web Cache, we, man we manage grid set, S3 blob store, and 5 blob store, and uh, in WMS layer. Uh, Terraform comes with uh, a CLI, uh, a, a Terraform CLI, uh, so mainly to plan and apply a deployment. But you can also use it uh, for. Uh, you can also use it to do nice stuff. So, for example, there is uh, if you have something which is already defined in a Geo Server config, uh, an existing Geo Server instance, and you want to uh, prepare. Uh, Terraform configuration to be able to deploy it in a over a staff, uh, in a an over environment. Uh, you can use the Terraform import command, which allows to generate resource manifest from existing GeoServer resources. So you j uh, you just have to configure a provider file uh, to the existing instance. You use Terraform in it, and then Terraform import by pointing the resource you want to uh, create. Uh, you have uh, at the end the Terraform state that we contain the definition of the feature type, and so you only have to uh, copy paste this configuration in a Terraform uh, configuration file, and you can use it after to deploy it in a, in another uh, uh, in another environment. Uh, there is also a Terraform graph command which uh, can be used to generate a uh, graphic on the resources and to help you for the documentation uh, of your uh, system. Uh, so you just combine that with a dot uh, command to get this kind of images. Uh, we have also, so um, we met some challenges this year to manage attributes in feature types uh, with uh, uh, automatic or custom list. Let's, let's see uh, the feature. So in the first version of the provider, we, uh, we, we did, uh, we expected, we wanted to list all the uh, expected attributes of the feature. Uh, that uh, one of the problem is that uh, when you have in your database a table with uh, 30 columns, it makes uh, quite uh, a time to uh, create your resource. And uh, moreover, by doing so, uh, GeoServer will consider the feature type as uh, one with custom attribute list. In GeoServer 2.24.0, there was for some time a bug which made WFS not working with a custom attribute list uh, feature type, which is uh, which was the issue 11236, <coughs> and uh, so to uh, we have for a short time I have to change uh, the provider to be able to uh, to say uh, to GeoServer that uh, you take the list uh, of the data store like uh, when you uh, you don't provide. Uh, so it was finally in good things because we we were able to we, we no longer have to declare uh, all the attributes upfront in Terraform. It is computed by GeoServer, uh, and so from the version 0016 on our side, the, uh, if there is no attribute 
we create a feature type with no attribute in the REST API call, so GeoServer uh, detect it. And uh, if we declared at least one attribute, uh, we will turn uh, the, we create a feature type with custom attribute list. Uh, but it bring another, another issue. Uh, if uh, we use the uh, uh, automatic attribute list mode, uh, we are not able to uh, um, Terraform won't update, won't tell GeoServer to uh, update the attribute list uh, if the database had changed, for example. So for us, it was a, a kind of problem. What we have done to solve that is to use a, a Terraform, some Terraform mechanism to do so. So we have uh, now a database version in, uh, in the Terraform configuration. Uh, we use a Terraform data resource to uh, store the, the version in uh, the Terraform state. And uh, we had uh, on the database, we know we will change often, a lifecycle block uh, to uh, which uh, enable us to do, uh, to do the, to trigger a replace of the resource when the database version is changed. So just some snipe set. So at the top row, you have uh, the database version that we can, for example, inject from a, uh, from a deployment in Kubernetes, or that even we can ask uh, it on the command line to the user. Uh, then uh, you have the Terraform data, which store it in the, the Terraform state. And uh, at the end, you have an example of a lifecycle life declaration to say when the internal version uh, of uh, the Terraform, uh, the variable internal version change, please update the feature type. And uh, this way, uh, it will uh, replace uh, create a, a recreate the feature type in the database in the GeoServer configuration by reading the new uh, list of attributes. Uh, you can also uh, with the templating uh, function, uh, you can also uh, use uh, use it. Uh, I have a, a customer, the, the developer team of customer, which uh, use it to. Uh, generate uh, its uh, style definition. Uh, so uh, the temp uh, there is a template file function into a Terraform, uh, which uh, can do some variable substitution from on a template file and give you back the result. Uh, there is some uh, feature like simple variable substitution. You can iterate on list, and you can also do some map uh, iteration. And uh, you can also um, uh, call several template files inside of our template file. So you have example of uh, list iteration and map, map iteration. And uh, for example, for, uh, for my customer, the, the development team uh, use it to uh, adapt the credential of the uh, icon storage to the tar targeted environment, because they don't store it in the same storage on uh, S3, for example. Uh, they, they use it to have only one command marker style definition, and uh, they change only the SVG file uh, by uh, templating the, the definition. Then also manage the translation uh, of, the st of the style into the manifest, and they also uh, share rule blocks between several styles. So for example, uh, this is style definition that they generate, they call the first a uh, template file with, you can see, a lot of, uh, cap a lot of uh, modification uh, type. You find the translation, for example, and there is also rules that they import for the label labeling. And so this, this way they use, uh, they, they generate all their uh, definition uh, for their different uh, markers. So to conclude, uh, what are the challenges that we expect and that we have? 
Uh, first, uh, GeoServer REST API is not complete, complete crude API, so uh, there is some, for example, for the layer API, you create feature types or other stuff which will create layers, but you generally have to delete layers if you want to have a clean, uh, for example, if you want to cascade correctly uh, the deletion in layer group. So for some Terraform resources, it makes uh, more difficult to implement uh, the, the stuff. Um, I recently discovered the magic world of image mosaic. And uh, so uh, I start to think of how could I implement uh, such a things with uh, my the Terraform. So I, for example, uh, it will be, uh, uh, there is some existing provider for uh, listing S3 uh, element in, bucket, in uh, S3 tiles in a bucket, and so perhaps I can do that. Um, I have the question of migrating to OpenTofu, which is a Modia fork of Terraform. Uh, so I don't know for the moment what we will do because uh, for for most side it's not compatible. Uh, the, the the BSL is no uh, incompatible with what we do as business. So I don't know what we will do in this way. So that's it. Thank you for your atten attention. Uh, don't hesitate uh, to to try. Uh, I have. I try to put some documentation also uh, together with the provider that you can uh, read it. Uh, and uh, if you have any question, you're welcome.